Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a circuit analysis for an RL circuit. You can see we have an R as our resistor, we have an L, R inductor, so we have an RL circuit, and we have a DC voltage source. And this is the circuit we're going to be using, 12 volts, 10K ohms, and 100 Henry in, uh, inductor. And we're going to look at this circuit at two different time points. One, first of all, immediately after the switch is closed, and then after the, well, after the switch has been closed for a long time. But immediately after the switch has been closed, which we call time equals zero seconds, okay, right when the switch is closed. Not before the switch is closed, but right when the switch is closed. And we want to know what is the current through the circuit, what is the voltage across the resistor, and what is the voltage across the inductor. Okay, now you should remember, this is an RL circuit. Inductors resist changes in current. That's their job. Capacitors resist changes in voltage, and inductors resist changes in current, okay? So when we first close the switch, because that is the point when the inductor can give the most resistance to the current, then the current actually is zero. When you close the switch, right when you close the switch, the current through the circuit is zero, all right? And that's the current through the battery, through the resistor, through the inductor. It's a series circuit. So that's the current through the entire circuit. The current is zero. And we want to know what is the voltage across the resistor. Well, V equals I times our ohms law. If there's no current, then there's no voltage across the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is also zero. Not also zero, but is zero volts. But the switch is closed. We have a 12 volt source. Well, if there's no volts across the resistor, then where is that 12 volts? Well, that 12 volts is across the inductor. So the voltage across the inductor when we first close the circuit is equal to the voltage of the battery, and that's going to be 12 volts. Now, the magnitude of the voltage is 12 volts. I put a negative sign here because it's self-induction, so it's uh, the polarity of the voltage is opposite that of the battery. So this is not like it's uh, less than zero, and it's not a vector just 12 volts, but it's the polarity of the voltage is opposite that of the battery, okay? So zero amps, zero volts, and 12 volts across the inductor. All the volts across the inductor, none of the voltage across the resistor. So then, of course, we have the same circuit, but now it says after the switch has been closed for a long time. I say T equal infinity. Now it's not necessarily infinity, it could be 10 seconds, it could be 20 seconds, a minute. After the kind of the current has come to steady state, and after a long time, what is the current through the circuit? What is the voltage across the resistor? And what is the voltage across the inductor? Now remember, once again, inductor resists change in current. Now they can't resist that change in current forever. They only do that for a little time. So the current increases. So after a long time, then the current through the circuit is going to be equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage of the circuit divided by the total resistance. And we only have one resistor. So this is Ohm's law again, which we just solved for the current. And we know the voltage is 12 volts. The resistance of the resistor is 10K. And that gives us 1.2 milliamps. So after a long time, after the current has come to a steady state, then we have 1.2 milliamps of current going through the entire circuit like that. All right. And then, so remember it was zero. Now it's 1.2 milliamps. The voltage across the resistor the voltage across the resistor is just uh, Ohm's law of equals I times R. So V, uh, the current is 1.2 milliamps. The resistance is 10K, and that gives us 12 volts. That means that all of the voltage is now across the resistor. And because the inductor can no longer is no longer resisting the change in the current, basically acting like short, that means the voltage across the inductor is zero. As I said, after a long time, the coil is just acting like a short or people say like a long wire, okay? But it's just a short, there's no resistance across, or there's no voltage across the inductor. All right, now let's just uh, summarize those two things. Summary, this is at time equals zero, and this is at time equals long time. Okay, at time equals zero, the current through the circuit is zero. That's when the inductor is offering its greatest resistance to the change in the current. And after a long time, the current is equal to the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which in our case was 1.2 milliamps. So it goes from zero to its maximum. This is the maximum current. But the resistance across the 
resistor is also zero, excuse me, the voltage across the resistor, the resistor is also zero because there's no current of equal side times R, Ohm's law, no current, no voltage. But then uh, at the end, after time, at, at the switch has been closed for a long time, then all the voltage is across the resistor. And it's the current times the resistance of the resistor. So from zero to 12. All right, and then as far as the inductor is concerned, when we first close the switch, all of the voltage is across the inductor. And that means the voltage across the inductor is equal to the voltage of the battery. And then after a long time, when the inductor is no longer resisting changes to the current, then the voltage across the inductor is zero volts. It should be zero volts, okay? So you can see we go from minimum to maximum, minimum to maximum, and maximum to minimum. You can see that in these graphs, okay? This is a graph of the current with respect to time. Now this is time constants, which we're not time talking about yet in this video, but I have that in my future videos or in my other videos. So this is basically time, and this is the current as a percentage of the eventual maximum. So this is increasing current, this is increasing time. So you can see over time, the current starts at zero and increases to essentially it approaches 100%, all right? Now the same graph, you can show the same graph for the resistance across the resistor because they're directly proportional to each other through Ohm's law of the equal side times R. So this graph is for the current, but it could also be for the voltage across the resistor. Now this is the graph for the voltage across the inductor. Once again, time and time constants, so time increasing this way, and this is the voltage across the inductor as a percentage of the original maximum voltage across the inductor. And you can see over time, it goes to zero, and it approaches zero, all right? So the current increases to its maximum, and the voltage decreases from its maximum to zero. All right, now, we have one more. Now you can um, kind of look at this circuit really quick. 24 volts, two resistors this time, one inductor, and we are going to answer all these questions. So you could, if you wanted to, you could stop the video, pause the video right now, try and figure out what the current in the circuit is gonna be, the voltage across the five, the voltage across the three, and the voltage across the inductor. Do that, answer those questions, and then, We'll come back now and I'll give you the answers. See if you got them right. Okay, it's kind of like a puzzle. Not a lot of math involved. It's supposed to be just kind of a, see if you have a conceptual understanding. All right, so once again, when we first close the switch, the current through the circuit is zero because the inductor is resisting the change in current. And if the current is zero, then the voltage across the five and the voltage across the three are also zero. Well, we do have a 24 volt source there's no voltage across the resistors, then where is that voltage? Well, that voltage is all across the inductor, and the voltage of the inductor is equal to the voltage of the battery. Now, let's set the next one. After the switch has been closed for a long time, we're gonna basically answer the same questions, so you could now pause the video again, answer those questions, and then we'll come back in one second, when you're done, and show you the answers. Okay, now we're at the other end of the spectrum. The switch has been closed for a long time, what is the current through the circuit? Well, we have a five and a three. That's an equivalent resistance of eight, a voltage source of 24. The current is the voltage divided by the resistance, and that means the total current, the maximum current through the circuit, after the switch in the closed for a long time, is three amps. Well, what's the voltage across the five? Well, the voltage is the current times resistance. Resistance is five, the current is three. That makes 15. What's the voltage across the three? Three times three is nine. You can see we have 15 across the 5, 9 across the 3, 9 plus 15 is 24, we have a 24 volt source, and that means that all the voltages across the resistor, and we know the inductor is no longer resisting, no longer resisting the change in the current after a long time, and therefore now the voltage across the inductor, as it acts like a short, a simple wire, there's no voltage across the inductor. All right, so there you go. I just wanted to go over kind of a quick circuit analysis for an RL circuit. We'll do some more complicated circuits in the next videos. And thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.